Hi everybody, welcome back. In the previous Raspberry Pi video that I posted, I took you through setting up a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus uh, to get the GPIO, I2C, and SPI uh, channels up and running. What I said then was that I would take you through how to do the same thing for a Raspberry Pi uh, version 2 and take it all the way from having Raspbian installed and nothing more to getting all of the drivers downloaded and getting them up and running. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to follow up immediately after this with a video on how to um, configure a number of I2C devices in um, basically I've got a little diagram here and I'm going to take you through how to how to build this. So you've got your Raspberry Pi B plus, you've got your I2C lines coming out, you've got an isolation system here which provides several thousand volts of isolation between the Raspberry Pi and your circuitry. So if you're controlling um, you know, mains or high voltages or some high power thing that you want to protect your Pi from, then this is the circuit for you. Uh, and you can also basically, if, you know, I intend to use it for a uh, power supply project where I have multiple channels. And of course, I want to have the channels floating so I can configure them how I want. And by doing something like this uh, here, it allows me to configure it so that I can have them floating. So I have one of these for each channel and I'm talking to them quite happily but they're going to be isolated from each other. And then on this side what I've got is I've got a four channel digital to analog converter, a one channel digital to analog converter and by the end of the video we will also have a four channel uh, analog to digital converter as well. And we'll have all these working on the same I2C bus. It's one of the advantages of I2C over SPI is that you can put a number of devices on one channel and not have to worry about chip select lines because you're sending out addresses. Anyway, first thing we've got to do of course is take the mod Raspberry Pi Model 2 from the install of Raspbian and get all the extra drivers and everything installed so that we can actually do um, all these I.O. things. So let's get to that. Okay, so first things first, um, I've already downloaded and installed onto an SD card um, a copy of Raspbian, the latest one from the uh, site. So I'm just going to plug this in and power up my Pi. Um, and once it's up and running, we will log in remotely with an SSH shell and uh, go from there. So let's get this thing powered up. Okay, so here's the Pi. It's uh, now powered up and should be ready to connect with SSH. The only thing I've got connected to it is I've got uh, USB power from a um, hub, not actually connecting to the Pi through the USB. It's just providing power to it. And I've got the network port. I'm not using the HDMI connectors or anything else. It's just purely everything we're going to do on this video is going to be through the SSH connection on the network port. And I'm using TerraTerm that I downloaded and installed on my tablet for this. So let's just go back to the tablet and get going. So I'm using the default um, computer name for the Raspberry Pi, which is Raspberry Pi when it sets up. And um, I'm not sure what IP address it's, it's picked up on, but it doesn't really matter. So let's get in here and connect. Should prompt us for the password. I haven't changed that from the default for the sake of this. So it's just Pi and Raspberry and that should let us connect. Now, for the sake of this, I'm going to make the font bigger so that everybody can see things a little easier. All right, so there's nothing on here at the moment. It's just got the basic um, desktop with Python games. Now, I'm going to um, put uh, the list of this documented up on the my blog as well, either on Element 14's, um, well, actually both on Element 14 and my, on my own website. So if you don't get all of this straight from the video, then it will be linked in so that you can get to the information and all the drivers and everything else. So the first thing you need to do is run Raspi config so that we can enable the SPI and I2C bus. So um, you need to run that with sudo if you haven't set up your Pi to automatically be running in root. So sudo raspy config, there we go. So just go down to um, advanced options, press enter, go down to spy, go in there, say yes, we want to enable spy, uh, okay. Yes, we want it to be loaded by default, so we say okay to that. And it'll be now reloaded by default when you every time you reboot the computer. So that's great. 
Now we need to do the same for I2C. So we go down to I2, uh, advanced options again. We will go down to the I2C this time, press enter, say OK. Yes, we want it, uh, confirm it's enabled. Yes, we want it loaded by default. And uh, OK, that's pretty much that for the basics there. We're not going to worry about the camera right now, and I'm not going to worry about the serial port, although in a later video we will turn that on and start communicating with it with an Arduino or something like that so you can see how it's done. So now let's go on to the next steps of configuration to get this thing ready. Okay, so when you exit this, by the way, you need to do a, um, a reboot of your Pi. Don't just pull the power out, actually do a pseudo reboot so that it actually uh, writes everything to the SD card and comes up gracefully. So let's just do that now. So we'll just finish and exit out of here. We'll do a pseudo uh, reboot. And now it's gonna reboot, so we'll just give it a few seconds to uh, cycle through. Okay, now log back in again. So what we need to do is, um, if you want, you can run a sudo apt get update and a sudo apt get upgrade to bring all of your software up to date. Um, I've just recently downloaded this straight from the Raspbian site, so um, I'm not going to bother doing that right now. It takes a little while to do it, and I've done it on other videos. So uh, if you want to go and do that because you've got an older image, then go right ahead and follow on. Uh, for now, we're just going to continue with installing the Git core so that we can pull things down off the internet from GitHub and various other Git um, stores that's out on the internet for you to download from. And what we're going to install after that is Gordon Henderson's um, Raspy Rasp wiring software libraries, which makes it a lot easier to talk to a lot of the GPIO devices because there's libraries already for some of the port expanders for SPI and some of the digital to analog, and analog to digital converters and other devices all wrapped up into some neat libraries. So we'll take you through using those as we go through the series of videos. We're also going to be using uh, the SPI and the I2C directly as well. So we'll cover those as we go through. But for now, we're just going to get the software installed. All right, so first thing is to get the um, GitHub installed. So sudo apt get install git core. And we'll just let that go through. And I guess it's already up to date on my um, image of Raspbian that came from the uh, raspbian.org website. So that's good, nothing to do there. Next thing is to start going through and putting in the spy drivers and things like that. So what we have to do is a um, git from Gordon Henderson's uh, Dragon website. So the URL will be posted. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is just paste this in. So you do a git clone, um, git colon slash slash git dot dragon dot net slash wiring pi, which is the name of the libraries that Gordon has created for um, our purposes of using all the SPI and I2C and everything else. So we'll just press enter to that, let it come down. And that's done. So next thing now is to uh, go into the directories and do some compiling. All right, so we go in the directory, cd wiring pi. Okay, now we just do dot slash build and get everything built up. So it's going to compile all the libraries. The nice thing is you've got all of the C code to, so you can have a look at. And if you look at this, there's quite an extensive list of um, devices that have already been configured and uh, available to use from the library here. So that's nice to see. And there's going to be more added as time goes on. We've got LCDs, Pyface Digitals, GERT boards, uh, DSL 302s, um, NeoPixels, uh, PyGlow, LCD panels. All right, so if Gordon's, um, if the wire, wiring Pi drivers have loaded and compiled properly, you should be able to type GPIO space dash V, which will give you the version uh, information, which it does right there. So it's telling us that um, we've got 2015 copyright version 2.26, copyright Gordon Henderson. Um, and it tells us that we've got the Raspberry Pi 
Model 2 Revision 1.1 with 1 gigabytes of memory. So that's all excellent stuff. Now, um, one of the things it can also do is give you a complete um, map dump of the 40-pin GPIO header, and you do this by just saying GPIO space read all, and press enter, and it actually shows you a complete dump of all of the pins and what they are. So it tells you the, the wire pi pin assignment, the VCM pin assignment, which is basically the chip, uh, the name of the pin and the ones we're, of course, going to be interested in later on are the SDA, SCL, 3.3 volts, of course, and 0 volts, and the MOSI, MISO, S-Clock, and the two chip selects, which are over this side. Now, with the SPI, as you'll discover, there's only two um, channels that have been configured, which really means you can only have two base devices operating at a time on the Raspberry Pi. Now that's not a um, huge disadvantage as long as you stay within certain ranges of uh, chips that are available because some of the ones that are out on the market that are relatively inexpensive to use do have a um, an addressing scheme as well as the chip select. So for instance the um, 23S17 from um, Microchip actually has the ability to separate all of the devices into separate addresses. So you change a few pins on the outside of it and you can actually make it change its location. Even though they all have the same base address, what you effectively do is send double commands to the chips to control them and it allows you to have multiple devices on the same um, single chip select. So a little bit of expansion capability. It's not quite as good as I2C, where obviously they're all got um, actual addresses that you serialize through the two pins of the uh, communications, but it's you know, better than nothing. Anyway, um, that basically shows us that the basic libraries have compiled and are all up and running quite happily on the Raspberry Pi Model 2. So let's go to the next step. All right, so if we want to find out whether the spy drivers have loaded properly, um, and whether there's any issues with the configuration of the Pi, the easiest way to do this is to just type GPIO um, space uh, load spy, I think. Yes, load spy. Load spy, and if there are any errors, it will report them right now. So if this comes back without anything, then we know that the actual base spy drivers are all up and running. And you can do the same thing with the um, I2C as well, just by doing the same I2C. And it tells us that the I2C0 is not present at the moment. So we've got a little bit of work to do to get the uh, I2C things up and running still. Anyway, let's just continue with the spy stuff just for a moment. So looks like the um, all of the spy stuff is actually done, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. So what we'll now do is quickly look at why the I2C is not working properly. And I do happen to know that there are some issues, or not issues as such, but there are some extra steps that you have to do when you get the um, to get the I2C and things up and running on a Model 2 compared to earlier versions. So let's just go in and uh, see what we have to do for that. All right, so the first thing to have a look at just to make sure things are working properly is the... Um, blacklist, which is a file on a Raspberry Pi that can tell it to not load certain drivers. So the way you check that, it's actually in Etsy modprobe.d slash raspberry dash blacklist.conf. So we'll just load it up with nano and see if uh, it has anything in. So there's nothing in here, um, which is good, which means that nothing is getting blocked there. Um, there is one other step that you have to do when you're using a later version of the kernel, and this is well documented on the Adafruit website, and I just happen to have the page loaded up here so that you can have a look. So this is the uh, what you might see actually typically in the uh, blacklist file if there was an issue, which of course we don't, so we'll just go down here a little bit. And um, what there is, going down a bit further... Ah, here. Yeah, if you are running a recent Raspberry Pi 3.18 kernel or higher, you also need to update the uh, slash boot slash config.txt file um, by just doing sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt. And you need to add a couple of extra commands in there to get the I2C up and running. So if we just uh, grab these two, um, sorry, the command right here, save me just typing it all. And control C. And we'll just drop that in here and edit that file. Now we need to scroll down 
to get to the bottom because that's where all of these things are. All right, so it looks like a lot of those may already be there. Um, we're looking for DT param I2C1 equals on and DT param I2C arm equals on. So there's uh, DT param I2C arm equals on. Uh, there is no, there's spy on. So the one that's missing here is the I2C on, um, which is the first one. So this second line here, which is DTC Pr uh, DT prom I2C arm on is already in that list, but this one here, which is I2C one on, is not. So we need to go and add that. I'm not sure why it only does one of them and not the other, but that's just you know the way it seems to be behaving. And we'll paste that in there, and now we'll just exit out, which is Control X, uh, save yes config.txt, enter. Now we need to do a reboot again, of course, because uh, we need to make these things take effect. So sudo reboot. And we'll give it a second. Once it's back up, we'll continue. OK, so just finished rebooting. So let's just go and uh, have another check of that file to make sure it's uh, stuck, of course, So which it should have done, of course. And there it is there, i2c1 on. So that's good. OK, so now we just need to run a couple more commands to uh, download some more drivers for the uh, Simbus and uh, I2C tools. So we're just going to run those now. So the first one is the, uh, these are the two I'm pasting in. So sudo apt-get install python smbus. And the second one is sudo apt-get install i2c-tool. Got to give that a second to finish installing. There we go. So now we have our devices being detected on the I2C bus, and now we should also be able to run the um, GPIO load I2C. except it's trying to load I2C0 instead of I2C1. That's probably a small edit we need to do somewhere else. But as we can see here, I2C1 has loaded up and is working quite happily. Uh, so let's go on and see what else we need to do to get this thing up and running. So after editing the uh, config.txt file, we need to edit another file in the Etsy modules. Um, this is it. I've just loaded it up in Nano, and you can see here we've all we've got is the uh, BMC, sorry, BCM2835 uh, SND driver in the modules, and what we actually need to have in here is the I2C modules as well, which is probably why the um, first one is not working and only the second um, channel is up and running. So let's just grab this, and we will um, add it to the file. Okay, and save that. Okay, that's what's next. Okay, so it looks like that's everything for that. The next thing we're going to quickly add while we're in here configuring things is uh, support for the DS18B20 temperature sensor. This is a little um, temperature sensor that can come in a variety of packages, um, one of them being a um, little transistor kind of package, which is here. I don't know if it's going to focus on it. Let's see. Back a little bit, maybe. Okay, man. There we go. So it's a little uh, package like that, which has got the temperature sensor in it, and it's one wire. You provide it with five, uh, anything, so between three and five volts, and it's just a one wire communication. Send a command out to it, and it responds with the temperature. Um, that's one packaging, and the one that I've got that's currently hooked up to the Pi is actually in a, um, let's take that out of the way there, it's in a little steel container, which is uh, much more resilient to uh, the elements and things. 
get these off of eBay quite cheaply. They're, they're basically, it's the same um, device inside. It's just been put into a stainless steel um, tube and sealed with some heat shrink and uh, heavy duty wiring and stuff. So we'll load the drivers up to be able to try that too, just to complete the picture. And what you need to do for this is you need to edit the uh, boot.config and add a DT overlay W1 GPIO to it. So we'll do that right now. We'll so control C, uh, oh, pseudo nano. Yeah, we've already got that there. So let's go to the thing. We have this back here a little bit. There we go. So we'll just scroll to the bottom of here and we'll add it to the bottom of the list. Okay, save that. Yes, enter. The next thing we've got to do is some uh, mod probes, W1 GPIO, uh, mod probe W1 thermometer, and then we're going to go into um, Sysbus devices and check a couple of things here to see if it's working. I'll show you the schematic for the how you hook this thing up um, in a little while. So I'm just going to paste this in on the command line here so that you can see. Mess that up. One second. Control C. Yes, we'll do all of that. So I'm just chaining the commands together. All right, so we've done the sudo w therm. We've done the um, cd to the devices folder. Now we need to, if we just list the devices, you'll see that the if, it, if everything is working, um, we should see the name of the device listed in here if I'm in the right place. I probably need to reboot because I have not um, done that since I edited the config file. So let me just do that and get back to this. Okay, that was definitely the problem. I've just uh, done a reboot and if I just, and I've just gone back into the directory, the uh, Sysbus W1 devices and done a listing. And as you'll see here now, you'll see that there's, a, there's the serial number of the device right here, which is um, the one that's actually plugged into this. So now we should be able to execute um, the command to uh, actually read from this. Oops, wrong file. Let's get the right one. Okay, which is basically... Um, We go into the file name for this um, directory, which is the 28SXX, whatever that is. So we'll just um, go into there. And if you press tab while you're doing this, it'll automatically bring up the uh, remainder for you. So go in here, and now we just need to do a um, cat command um, to cat w1 underscore slave. So if we just do cat w1 underscore slave it should return the temperature and there we go so the, it returns two things two strings the first one is the data if it says crc55 yes basically at the end if it says it's yes then that means that it's actually um, communicated with the temperature sensor correctly and then the next line that comes out um, is actually interpreting the temperature so it's in um, thousandths of a degree centigrade, so it's basically 22.812 degrees C, which is uh, shows that that device is now working. So yeah, you got to remember to do your reboots at the right time, and I missed one of them, so that's fine. Um, the documentation, I'll make sure I have that in there. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, the um, remaining I2C. So let's just go have a quick look at that to see if everything's working there. All right, so one of the things that I found was that uh, you need to load, uh, potentially if there's an issue, that you need the lib i2c-dev to be loaded. So I'm just going to try this and see if that fixes our problem. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it was already in, so that could be the issue with the um, GPIO load i2c, because apparently it um, detects that they may be missing when you compile and... Uh, excludes the use of it. So let's just see if this fixes things. Let's go back up to the um, 
folder. All right, dot slash build. Again. Okay, so let's try this. GPIO load I to C. And it still doesn't like it. There's, for some reason, it's trying to use I2C0. And if I do a sudo um, detect um, dash y I2C detect dash y bus 0, it'll tell me that it probably doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't. And if I tell it to use bus 1, which is what's being used on the Raspberry Pi 2, then it works. So I think what that is, is uh, maybe Gordon's drivers need a tweak to allow it to use the Raspberry Pi 2. So let's just do a quick Google search and see if I can find something related to that and get back to you. Okay, through the magic of uh, stopping the video recording, I'm instantly back and figured out what the problem was. Um, the library, when you do a um, GPIO loads I2C, it's trying to load the I2C0 library. It hasn't doesn't look like it's been updated to load I2C1 yet. So all I've done is in the um, config.txt slash boot slash config.txt file, I've added a DT param I2C0 equals on as well. Because the um, Raspberry Pi does actually have two I2C buses. And um, I just put this um, on, saved the file, and exited and did a reboot. And now when I um, try to do a uh, GPIO load I2C, it actually comes back quite happily. So that's all it was. It's probably not really an issue, and it's probably not going to stop anything else from working because usually when we're uh, accessing devices, they will quite happily uh, work on I2C bus 1 anyway because you actually specify the bus number as part of the commands. Anyway, before I exited this particular uh, video, what I wanted to show you was um, a little bit of Python to actually talk to the temperature probe that we have hooked up on the Pi. All right, this one right here. Mm. Trying to get it back in the camera. There we go. I thought I'd take that away. All right. So we want to have a look at this and how we can automate perhaps a little bit of the uh, work there. So I have a um, there's a file that we can actually access. Um, just trying to remember where I put my programming info. Here we go. So I made a note of it on my um, thing here, and I'm going to include how to do this in um, the blog post. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Python um, script, thermometer.py, and um, save that on the Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to execute it. And what's going to happen here is going to import um, global variables, OS, time. It's going to create a uh, couple of system commands mod probe WGPIO, mod probe W1 thermometer. Um, if you remember, we did these manually a moment ago. Um, we're going to set the base directory um, to the devices where the temperature probe sets up. Um, we're automatically going to create a uh, 28 star, um, which is allows us to go into the first um, file that starts with 28 in the directory, which would be the serial number of the probe that we have. Um, and then it's basically going to just uh, open the file, and it's going to uh, read the temperature and basically going to loop around. So the first one basically sets up a function uh, read temperature raw, uh, which is going to return the two lines of text that we saw when we did it on the command line. The second function here, read temperature, is going to be, um, while there are lines that are coming back, a uh, little bit of a sleep delay, read the raw temperature, um, and then it's going to pass the string that came back and give us a nice little dis uh, text output. And then at the very end, while true, which means do this forever, uh, print read temperature and then sleep for a second. So this is basically going to sit there every second. It should output on the console the current temperature. It's just a little example that I wanted to show you. Um, so if we just go and 
I'm just going to do some cut and paste in here rather than retype all of this. Um, so we're going to sudo, sorry, we're going to nano uh, thermometer.py in the normal user's home directory, all right, which is where we are at the moment. Okay, so let's just um, create the file. I guess we don't want the uh, line numbering that's at the beginning of it though. And we're going to paste in all of this text. I'm just going to cut it from here. It's already should be formatted correctly for um, Python because I know it's very, very anal about having the correct indentations and things like that. So let's go in here and paste that in. We'll say OK. It should put all of it there. Um, just have a quick scan to make sure none of the lines have been uh, messed up. I have to use the arrow keys, not that. Um, so that actually looks okay. So let's just save that. Save it. Yes, the moment it up pi. And now we should be able to um, run this by just typing, I think, Python space and then the file name dot pi. Did I write it down here anywhere? I didn't, but I'm pretty sure that's all you've got to do to run this thing. So Python, P-Y-T-H-O-N space. Might need a sudo. Yeah, that's the way I spell things correctly as well. That's it. So there you go. It's actually sitting there now. Um, every second outputting the temperature in degrees centigrade and degrees Fahrenheit. So that little script that I'll include in my um, post is now happily every second spitting out the temperature. Now, as you can imagine, with uh, the other devices, it's very easy to chain reading from ADCs, DACs, uh, GPIO, and everything else. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing anything more on that right now. That's going to be for the next video where we start doing some isolation, uh, talking to multiple devices on the board and everything else. Uh, for now, this completes setting up the um, Raspberry Pi Model 2 with the I2C and SPY drivers. And in the next video, we will start actually hooking up some devices to the Raspberry Pi Model 2B and getting everything going. Um, just for the last thing for this though, I wanted to just show you how I've got the Pi hooked up um, with this temperature probe. So let's just scan around here and look at the board. So this is the Raspberry Pi right here. And if I pick this up, it's in a 3D printed case that I made. Um, what we've got is we've got the I2C connector, this black and white connector up here. Uh, bring that into view a bit better, I think. Let's just take that out of there. Okay, there we go. So we've got the GPIO, we've got power, uh, plus 3.3, and then the next two lines, these black and white lines, they're the I2C bus, and then we've got the um, ground coming out here. Um, at the back here, the um, yellow wire, that's the one that I'm using um, to communicate with the... Um, temperature probe. So it's just going to go out onto the data line. So it's basically the one wire connection right here um, going out. I'll include the schematics for that as well when I post everything. Um, the other wires down here, these are all the I2C lines that we're going to be using. Sorry, they're the spy lines that we're going to be using in a later video to talk to some other devices. Okay. Um, so yeah, I2C, one wire, power, and spy connections. That's what we've got. And um, if I just go over to here now, onto the breadboard, if I hold this up, all right, this is the cable, the black cable right here, that is, um, there we go. So this one here, this black cable, you can see all of my wires come up to this little uh, header that allows me to plug the Raspberry Pi into the breadboard. Um, these resistors that you see just here, um, deep in there, they are for um, pull-ups. 
for the I2C lines because you have to have 10K or 4K. Now, anyway, anything between a couple of K and 10K pull-ups to allow the lines to work properly. If you don't put them in, they're not going to work. The red and black lines here are just bringing the power out to um, one of the bus bars on my breadboard so that I can distribute it. Um, the one wire is this one that's coming up here. The yellow one drops in here. The orange wire is this one here is the one that is the uh, one wire connection right here. And if I go back to the Pi for a second, um, what I did was the on this end of the Pi, let me just move the camera so you can see again. Uh, there we go. So on the Pi, if I just move these other wires out of the way, that's the power, which is the brown wire, which I'm just pulling out the way here. Um, you've got the I2C lines here, which I'll keep those out of the way. The one at the back here is actually the ground wire, not the uh, signal wire for the one wire. And the orange wire that I've put, which is the basically one, two, three, four, five, six, pin seven, that's the one that I'm using to connect to the one wire to the thermometer probe. All right. As I say, I will uh, provide a complete schematic to show how all of these things are connected so there won't be any issues. Um, but for now, that's everything. Um, so we've got one little example of using the, uh, the one-wire temperature probe. Uh, we've got the driver set up, and now the whole thing is ready to start diving into getting actual devices up and running. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, and um, we will get together real soon and continue the series where we start doing real I.O. And for those that are following my power supply project, um, as you can see uh, where we're going with this is we're trying to set up some kind of controller that will allow us to actually control the power supply. So by having I2C devices through an isolation channel, um, we're going to be able to uh, set the voltage output, set the current limits, uh, and read back the voltages and current being uh, consumed by some load uh, without having to worry about damaging the Pi or isolating it from the ground and everything so you can truly still have a floating power supply and things like that which is just one of the uses that you can um, do with obviously having all of these things connected to a Raspberry Pi. Um, you I mean you can do all of this stuff with a um, an Arduino or a launch pad or something like that as well it really doesn't matter which device you use I just happen to be using this at the moment to show you how to do it with the Raspberry Pi. Anyway till next time.